So this problem states a five meter copper pipe is used to connect and distribute water from a holding tank to a bathroom faucet. If at the time of installation, the temperature of the pipe was measured at 16 degrees Celsius, and after running hot water through it, it raises to 80 degrees Celsius, the working length, assuming free expansion, of the pipe will be most close to what? So in this problem, we have a few new terms that are presented to us. And we are told that we have a pipe that is installed originally at some initial length, but that it has a working length, which is what we are asked to define. Now, this tells us that to some degree, the length of the pipe will be changing or deforming when we put it into operation. Let's scratch out what we are given. So we know that the length of our copper pipe is five meters originally. We know that the original temperature at the time of installation is 16 degrees Celsius. We know that the material is going to raise to a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. We know that from the illustration or the diagram that the diameter is 13 millimeters. So let's check to see what the NCS reference handbook tells us about thermal expansion or specifically thermal deformations in this case. So we're flipping back to page 80. This is again version 9.4 NCES reference handbook version 9.4. What does it tell us about thermal deformations? We can hone in on this little section right here. It's titled thermal deformations. Surprise. So this will be our primary formula we will start all of our problems with. Now this problem tells us that if we have some object or some member of length L, which is taken through some thermal cycle where the temperature changes from T naught to T, then we are able to determine how much that member will deform or change in length, that's delta, by taking all the data alongside the specific temperature coefficient of expansion or also called the coefficient of thermal expansion as it, it is defined in the given tables in our reference handbook. Now remember that the coefficient of thermal expansion is the fractional increase in length per unit rise in temperature. So when all is said and done, the temperature units will cancel, cancel out, leaving us with the units of the length as it is defined. So let's go ahead and take this general formula back to our problem statement. Now I noted this here as the free thermal expansion or the free thermal deformation formula. Why did I do that? So our problem statement is telling us to assume free expansion. So it's the pipe is going to be free to expand or go through free thermal expansion. We have all the important theoretical information defined for us. Let's get to determining the working length of this pipe and then move more rapidly through a few more examples. Now looking at our free thermal expansion formula along with the data we have been presented in our problem statement, we know that we have the length defined, we have the original temperature, T naught, and we have the working temperature after hot water is run through the pipe. We have most all the vari variables defined that we need except for the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now we know that we can get this using the tables presented to us in the NCES supplied reference handbook. As long as we know the material, which in this case we do, and that's copper. So hopping back to our tables on page 84 of the NCES reference handbook and honing in on this upper table of material properties, we know that we will be pulling our coefficient from the fifth column that I just highlighted 
with blue. Now, knowing that we are working with a copper pipe, we reference this line and find that the coefficient of thermal expansion will be 9.3 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Fahrenheit, or 16.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 6 degree Celsius. So which one are we going to use? Is it going to be 9.3 or 16.6? .6? Let me hop back over to the problem statement. Which one is most appropriate to use? which is a very, very common mistake to make, but you see that our problem statement right now is giving us everything in degrees Celsius. So for that reason, that's the variable we're going to use. So if you hop back over to our table and bring back that uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, it will be 16.6 .6 times 10 to the negative six per degree Celsius. So with all that, with the coefficient of thermal expansion now defined, we have all the variables we need. All we need to do is simply place those into our formula, pump them into our calculator, and determine that the change, the thermal expansion, the thermal deformation of this copper pipe is going to be 0 0.0053. So that's the thermal expansion, the change in length. But we're not done here. That's an important piece of data we need but we actually are asked to determine what the working length is. So the working length is simply taking our original length and then either adding or subtracting what the delta will be based on our change in temperature. Now in this case, we're increasing and raising the temperature, which then gives us an uh, expansion of our copper pipe of 0.0053. So all we need to do is plug in the data that we already have to determine that our working length is going to be 5.005 meters. So that's our answer. And the correct answer, looking at our answer options, is going to be set selection or option C, 5.005 meters.